What a wonderful moment to be with you again this Saturday morning on Trailblazers Africa. My name is Moses Uwupadi. Uh Today we'll be looking into so many issues in the continent of Africa or on the continent of Africa, if you allow that. We'll be looking at, uh, we'll be diving a lot into the Chieftain Sita area. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, business, how we can encourage business development uh, in Africa, especially in Ghana, how can investors really come to us and see that we have what it takes that can attract them to invest? What kind of policies do we have? Uh, you also recall that recently the Bula Balu on the eviction of foreign retailers had uh, taken a new dimension. Well, the person that is in the studio with me today is a businessman who will be touching on almost everything. So I just want to ask you to please sit tight and be with me for this whole of one hour as we look at some of these pertinent issues. Well, my view, my, 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 my guest on the program today is a successful businessman. Of course, he has a group of companies and uh, is into shipping, export, uh, construction, general supply, even into card supply, so many things. So he understands what business is all about when we talk about you know, business development uh, in Africa. He also understands what retail is about. And uh, most importantly, he is a chief uh, from Grushi from Upper East Region of the Republic of Ghana. My guest is Alaji Ibrahim Mojo. I'd like to welcome you to Trailblazers Africa. Thank you. Well, uh, good to have you on the program, Thank in spite you. of the, the shadow. Yes. Yeah, let, let's take a look at uh, how it all started with uh, the young man then, yes. uh, some years back. Yes. Uh, then Ibrahim Mojo, not Alaji. Yes. Okay, now. Ibrahim Mojo... Uh, my father is ex-police officer called Ibrahim Kumasi from Upper X region, Navrongo. Mm. And mm. my mother is also from Vota region called Charity Agbetoko from Pandu in a small village called Juanti. Wow. Yeah. I started my school in Juanti Pramel, then passed the common entrance and went to Tamale, uh, Ghana Secondary School in Tamale and uh, obtained my O-level and my A-level. Then got admission to Accra Polytechnic to read a diploma in accountancy and went to Institute of Professional Studies, IPS, to obtain a degree in business administration. That is how it started. Wow. My life. Uh, let, 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 let's take a look at your life in Tamale. Yes. You know, I, I was Tamale because Tamale is a far place. So many people say, oh, Tamale, before you get to Accra, it will take years. Yes. <laughs> it, it was not easy in Tamale. Mm. And those days, we used to go to school without even slippers. And we have to try our best to compete with our brothers in the, in the southern part of Ghana. Mm. And which then were given a canvas, school vest, and school uniform free of charge. Wow. You need to also try your best and fix into the system. So but, definitely, but what, what, what was the, the motivating factor then? Yes, uh, the motivating factor was that because I happened to have half of my family from the southern part. I used to come on holidays to see how life is. So I didn't want to remain in that situation forever. That motivated me to take my education seriously. Hmm. Any, anybody on your way that really sparked up the, uh, the, the vision in you or it was a self-development? No, I, 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 I was looking at life, what it means to contribute, to make who you are. Not to look at somebody as if I was a young boy. And I could see how some people are doing it. And we have privilege to have people who are from good family, who are schooling together. Some could bring provisions, and you even ha don't have anything. So will you be in that situation forever? No. You have mm. to focus ahead. The program is still Trailblazers Africa, and my guest is Alaji Ibrahim Mojo, the successful businessman, chief of Krushi. Af uh, as a matter of fact, is the chief... Chief Executive Officer of a Millimont group of companies. Uh, we'll be looking at um, uh, a whole lot of issues, just like I did mention uh, during my introduction. Yeah, 
uh, uh, like how many countries have you had your or did you have your education uh, i schooled i had all my education in ghana throughout okay but i did some corresponding courses in london that is in uh, institute of freight forwarders association in london in custom uh, law and tariff interpretations yeah. Yeah. what tariffs when tariff. it's, okay, yeah, okay. It's tariff custom, it's, okay yes yes now that, that has a very serious cause yes yes to interpret tariff yes tariff means that uh, you have to classify goods mm -hmm. if it is an ECOWAS goods the regime you have to put it mm -hmm. if it is ghana goods goods that you can 20% import duty and feed. You have to differentiate them in doing your, your documents. Now, let, 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 maybe we should just go into this ECOWAS yes, challenge. Yes. Now, what is the position of ECOWAS when it comes to trade e, e, with, amongst the citizens? Very, ECOWAS is focused because we interrelate. For, for example, I did part of my shipping in Tinka Island in Nigeria. Mm. Then went back to Togo t to do another shipping there. You go to Benin, we speak the same language when it comes to business. So ECOWAS is, has set up body where we can help one another when it comes to ECOWAS manufactured goods. Okay. You know, so it is an association that help Africa to grow and to encourage business people to interrelate the activities in one country to another. Now, do you, do you businessmen uh, within the sub-region have an association? We don't have a recognized association, mm. but we know each other. Because I have somebody in Nigeria, when he's in difficulty, he calls me to handle his product for them. And then when I also have a an issue in Lagos, there is a company I deal with, straightforward. But the ECOWAS itself, because of ECOWAS protocol, there is an association of all custom officers from all the West African countries. They, they, they are in Abuja. They vet all these documents to see how goods and services flow without any difficulty. Let's look at, uh, now that you have the custom, yeah. Like you said, in mm -hmm. Abuja. Mm -hmm. Then we are looking at some of you who are operators. Yeah. Now, will it not be wise to have the association of uh, some of you who are operators so as to look at some of the policies, how it affects your business and how it encourages your business? Yes. Um, the association falls under ECOWAS Secretariat, where a representative from all the West African countries including Ghana, Nigeria, all those, Togo, Benin, all this, which they have picked custom officers okay. to represent your country's interests. Mm -hmm. So that whatever grievances, problems you bring, they will be able to discuss it on that level with good results for you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, the association will form it, it means we are more or less going to do the work of the the council. Yes, of the, the, the council, uh, yeah, of oh, the council right, right. you see. But it is policy strategy that is put in place, mm -hmm. you see. Because you should be able to get a custom, like from the Abuja Secretariat, where they take all these custom people, take a decision on the businessman's behalf. Now, let's take a look at the recent eviction yeah. of some retailers yeah. uh, in Ghana. Mm. Uh, what would be your reaction to that? I, 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 I was not happy about it because um, if you are from West Africa mm. uh, and you are doing business, I mean, you, 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 it goes into the same channel. It is the foreigners who are from different continent, the, is, is them that we have a problem, you see. But the West African countries, how much have they got to inject into the business? They are not operating as wholesalers. They are doing retailing, which we intermarried in West Africa, 
You can marry a Nigerian. You can marry a woman from Togo. Are you denying that woman from selling or making an ESME to support the family? As I said, if I go to Nigeria as Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarder, I do my business in Nigeria as a freight forwarder. If I go to Togo, I also do the same thing. All what I need to produce my card. If I go to Benin, I also do the same work I do in Ghana. It's part of... Do you have any problem no, in any of those countries? No, we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem. Now, I'd I like to ask this question again. Uh, well, uh, viewers, uh, we are looking at some very critical issue because my guest is a businessman, a successful businessman, and also a traditional leader. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to look at the business angle first before going into the traditional area. Now, uh, <clears throat> the issue of permanent, I mean, a resident permit, mm -hmm. uh, work permit, and mm -hmm. what have you, sh sh should it be a major concern? for West African citizens? Yes. Okay. One, the intention of that person. What kind of business are you doing? Okay. We have so many types of business that people do. Some are not favorable to the country. You see, recently you saw there was an arrest of colonels where they kept weapons inside. That's, you will not be comfortable for somebody to do that in your country. Mm. And we have people who are also engaged in drug business. The government will not take light to it. So you need to register, know the person, get a working permit to identify the type of business you do so that you can also contribute okay. and pay your taxes so that the government or the country can also grow. Yeah, you must do what is right to pay your tax yes, and yeah. ensure that the country yeah. where you operate yeah. also grow. Yeah. Now, you, you, you are into shipping industry. Yes. Yeah. How viable is that, is that sector? Yes. People, people say that majority of people in the shipping industry, they are multi billionaires oh. No, mm. you see, uh, 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 shipping is a business that involves external and internal. Somebody is sending something from one country to another country. What you are saying, it is an investor, investment for somebody. So it is not your money. You only render a service to discharge the goods to the final point. And you have what you call your service charge you, you, you take from the people. You see? So it is a business that people see you always going up and down. But the resources are not for you. Mm. Yes, because if you should bring a shipload of, let's say, rice, and somebody is taking delivery to another place, that rice is not for you. It's for the person. But at the end of the day, you have given your service, and you need to be paid. But the layman will see that, oh, look at chief. He's taking delivery of rice. Maybe he may think that it's for you, but it's not for you. Hmm. Now, uh, most of this product that we bring from, from other countries, mm -hmm. especially from Europe, from America, from mm -hmm. Asia, mm -hmm. and then bring them into mm -hmm. our own continent in Africa, uh, uh, do, do you have a regulatory body who check some of the, 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 the products mm -hmm. to look at the expiring date? Because someone told me that uh, most of the product at times that we bring to Africa already expired over there. And the period of even shipping may have made some of the products expire, yet we sell them to our people. That, that, that is not true. In Ghana, we have the Food and Drug Board, mm -hmm. the Standard Board, the Narcotic Board, Custom Exercise and Preventive Service, now the Revenue Board Agency, which has a department of their lab that train chemist officers, does see to the inspection of the product before it comes out. And recently, Ghana is one of the best countries that you cannot penetrate with expired goods or unlabeled product. Mm -hmm. You see that they chase you even to the market to buy. They have a department. They go around to check all this product. And they make sure that what comes to 
into the system is well labeled and well described. Without any human factor? No. You see, you understand like, what I mean by I, human I, I, factor? Yeah, yeah. Yes. In okay. those, yes. You cannot say uh, everything is 100%. You may okay. have about 2%. Okay. That you cannot. But we are very, I have been in this work for 27 years. Wow. And I've worked with people in authorities who are very firm when it comes to because you can go and buy, I can also go and buy. If there's a problem, it goes against all of us. So this is the situation on the ground. You can never penetrate a beat food and drug board or standard board when it comes to bulk items. Maybe somebody may put more in his bag and bring it out and get it. But a bulky consignment, they will make sure that the writing is done. There's always this issue of demorage, demorage, demorage. Yes. Now, what, what is always the problem that most of you will not be able to clear your views on time? Yes. <laughs> demorage comes about when you are not able to take delivery of your products mm -hmm. from the port. <clears throat> we have a shipping arrangement. The shipper will give you seven days free. And if you petition or you apply, they can give you another 21 days. After the 21 days, if you don't discharge the goods from the container, then demurrage accrues on it, and you have to pay. Now, the problem is that because you have paid for your container and the shipper is not able to issue the original bill of ladings to you, you will not be able to take delivery. So the time the document comes, maybe the demurrage has accrued on it, then you start to mitigate. Why are you charging? What is the reason that you take it from there? So in a serious business like what I do, immediately you bring your documents. I have to verify the documents. Is the original bill of lading available? If it's not available, what is the reason? Then you send mails to the, the supplier. Talk to your partner to send you the original bill. Mm -hmm. And within that seven days, if you are owing the information will come straight that you are owing, you have not been able to pay for your freight. That is why you have not surrounded the BL. You know why I'm asking you this question? There was an investor who wanted to come into one of the African countries. And uh, when he, he, he came and uh, he said he wanted to visit the mm. seaport. When mm. he got to the seaport, he was like, wow, why should I come to invest in this country when almost all the, uh, the goods that were supposed to have been delivered were still hanging there mm. on Demerich? How How... How f investment friendly yes. are uh, our ports in Africa? Yes. The, 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 the port has got nothing to do with the investor. It is Ghana Investment Promotions Council. Mm. Then you need to get your exemptions from the revenue board agencies. For you, you can come to the port and carry your goods. Now, if you are an investor and you don't pass through that channel, you say bring the things and you want to take it free, you must pay taxes on them. So you have to apply and bring your contract. I am bringing combined harvesters for farming in the northern region. Now you write a letter to Minister of Trade, trade to Ghana Investment Promotion Council and see the, your investment structure. Then they refer you to Revenue Board Agency, that's the custom division, they will prepare an exemption letter for you to go and carry your goods out from the port. So with that, those letters, when you come, you are treated as an ordinary person. And people don't have this information. Yeah, because you see, I, I think uh, yes, information yes, yes, is the, the That is problem. it. Yeah. Because somebody will say, look, I'm an investor. I'm bringing this into the country. Mm -hmm. You cannot bring air conditions and say you are an investor, so you want to take it free. Mm. It's a finished product. Everybody can put the, invest, uh, 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 the air conditioner in his room and use it or go and sell. So the government machinery is put in place to check all those things. Mm. Yeah, so some, some, some companies uh, will tell you they are bringing in a particular goods, mm. but in the process, they, they, they bring in some of the so-called uh, the contrabands. Yeah. Now, how, how, how can we check uh, the uh, 
the legal, because if it is rightly brought into the country, we can then use the word importation. How do we check illegal uh, importation of contraband products, especially in Africa, where so many people think our ports are weak, our ports are uh, porous, you know, and anything could come in? Yes. Uh, in the ports like Takradi and Tema port are very, very tight. But if you go to the neighboring countries, like taking a route from Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. coming through Togo, there are routes which are not approved. And you know it's very difficult to check some of these routes. That is why they find their way. And in Tema mm -hmm. and Takradi, with the work of the security agencies, they are very, very tough. You cannot act with them. Mm -hmm. So that is why if you come to Tema, they have a place that long room. You need to go through all check one by one so that you'll be able to check all your documents, mm -hmm. produce the right permits that will enable you to do the right thing. Well, I've been speaking with Alaj Ibrahim Mojo, a, a successful businessman, a chief of Krushi uh, in the Upper East region of uh, the Republic of Ghana. Uh, when I get to the second half, when we'll be looking at uh, chieftaincy, tradition, uh, we want to maybe it will begin to do some tradition, perform some uh, tradition. Uh, right uh, in the studio with me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, mm -hmm. but but we, I, I want us to touch more on uh, our trade, you know, uh, trade movement in West Africa. How easy is it for you? Now, you, 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 you said most times if you have problem uh, in Nigeria, some of your colleagues will fight for you if you have in the other part of the country. But let's assume that you have a particular product that is landing in Nigeria, for instance, or in Togo, and you want to move it down to Ghana. How is it within the West Africa? Very, yes, very, very, very difficult. Did you say difficult? Very difficult. <laughs> Why should it be difficult? Yes. You see, from Nigeria to Ilakoji, but you have to enter into Benin. You have mm -hmm. almost about 16 checkpoints. All you have to stop on the way to produce documents. And for me, if I get to Ilakoji and I get into Benin and custom to endorse my documents, I don't see why the other people should also stop me again. Hmm. It means that repetition of job. Now you get to Togo, you have to hand over the goods to Togo authority. They who have to also do the same check to Ghana. Port, the, the border between Togo and Ghana. Then you have to hand it over to Ghana. If it's from Ghana, you are going to Abuja, Ivory Coast. It means the same point you have to go. So you take a look. Hmm. On the road, you see some big trucks, long vehicles. It will take them about two to three weeks to get to their destinations. Two weeks? Yes. And this is the challenges. And on a normal circumstances, I mean, a normal circumstances, how many days should they have taken? Yes, it's, you know, from, from Ghana to, 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 from Nigeria to Ghana, it should not take you more than seven days. Hmm. And you'll be there for two weeks, you'll be there for three weeks, yes. and uh, the goods will also be crying for assistance, yes. that place of load me. Yes. Uh, no, that is, that is the challenge that we is have it. You see, uh, on, so, the, on the continent. Yes, yes. and that is why investments in, in African, West African countries is difficult. Hmm. Let's assume you are taking onion. Onions from West African countries are free duty because they are produced in okay. West locally. Yeah. You put onion in a big truck, you cover it up, you are coming to Ghana, and you spend three weeks. Before you come, spoiled. it's spoiled. Cola, the same thing. We load cola from Ghana here that you are going to Nigeria. Before you get to Nigeria, half is gone. 
you know. So these are the problems where you see uh, uh, African business men. You go up and get down. Mm. Because you have a small capital, somebody will tell you that, oh, my brother, get me yams from Ghana. You go and get everything. Before you get there, half is gone. Your capital is gone. So hmm. these are the challenges that we are having. In, well, what, what, in, what can we do to correct that? Should, should it be the, is it the duty of uh, the government or the duty of the business people themselves? It is the government. Hmm. The government must put policies in place that people will understand what you are doing. For instance, if you go to Europe, and you have this European Union visa, you just show it and you just go like that. But have your Ghana passport. You go to Togo, you check and put it down. Go to Benin, go to Nigeria. Why? It's a problem. You yeah, know. We are going back to the problem of ECOWAS again. Yes. Is there a need for ECOWAS in the first place? There is. But you have to identify ourselves as one people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I live in Nigeria, and I was comfortable because they identify me as one of the brothers. I go to the mocks with them. I eat with them. So I have no problem. We go to work. We close. I go to their houses, and we are friends. And some of them also come to me and live with me now. Because we were straightforward, we did good business together. Mm. So it is ECOWAS that has brought us together, you know. Yes, ECOWAS had brought us together. Let not ECOWAS scatter us again with their policies that are not friendly, mm -hmm. our policies that will not encourage investment, policies that will not encourage business development should be looked into so that we can move the sub-region forward. We have uh, very industrial people, people that are willing to contribute to the development of the sub-region. The program is Trail Blazers Africa, and my guest is still uh, Alaji Ibrahim Mojo, a successful businessman. After, uh, 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 as a matter of fact, um, he runs a conglomerate, uh, but he is also a chief uh, a traditional leader. So after this break, I will be focusing more on the area of uh, tradition and how we can use tradition to develop our continent Africa. The program, Trailblazers Africa, let's go for weather marble. And when we return, I'll continue with my guest. Stay with us. Welcome back. The program is still Trailblazers Africa. My guest is Alhaji Ibrahim Mojo, a successful businessman, a chief of Kushi in Upper East. Yes, let's go to Kushi a little. Yeah. Now, when did you become a traditional leader in Kushi? Yes, uh, in 1902, um, I, I was installed as a Kushi chief in Geta Accra community. Okay. And my grandfather was then the, the chief. Then he passed away. So they have to give me the title to take over the, the traditional rule in the Muslim community in Geta Accra. How, how has it been? Well, it's, it's, it's when people give you this assignment, it means uh, from where I come from, they've done a check on you to see that you'll be able to take care of them, to be there for them when they are in difficulty, to share with them, and take life up. Now, you know, before now, uh, traditional uh, 
rulership, mm. we're given so much honor in yeah. Africa. Yeah. Uh, what is really affecting us now? Is this civilization that is taking us away from uh, our own you know, tradition? Yes, you see, it is, it is, it is the policies. Uh, policies again? Yes. Yeah, everything is government. It's government. <laughs> I mean, yeah. those days, the olden days, when they say, come to, you are called by the chief to come. Whatever you are doing, you have to stop it. A chief settle an issue, then it goes back to court. And the court give judgment against the chief. Are you respecting the, the rules? Mm. And before the British came, we had our own system of governance that we know that when you hear that they hit the drum, that two o'clock, all of you should get there at the chief palace. You stop and come. Mm. But now, those things are not there again. Is it not because most of our chiefs now are also into politics? According to the 1992 constitution, the chiefs are not allowed to do politics. Mm. You are there for everybody. So since the constitution takes care of all of us, who assume that the chiefs are not involved in politics. Hmm. It's an assumption we assume. We assume because <laughs> you cannot go to the mind and check everybody yeah. what is able to do. Yeah, yeah Alaji, let, let me tell you one uh, story of a chief yeah. in one of the uh, one of the great countries, yeah. uh, greatest country we have on, in West Africa. Yeah. His son is in the pol is into politics, yes. and um, he would call the people and say, "Look, the political party of my son is what I want you people to vote for." Yes. He has interest. He will even go ahead to tell them, "Please vote for my child." But when another party comes, he will tell them, "Oh yes, we are for all of you. We are mm -hmm. chief. I don't mm -hmm. have uh, a leaning with anybody. We are all the same." Uh, uh, is that not deceit from the chief? That is, that is very bad. That is very, very bad. It means that chief is fighting for the interest of the son, which is wrong. You should listen to the, all the political parties' ideologies if it will favor your area. Hmm. But if you do that way, then it means that you are diverting what you are supposed to do. So let's assume that if somebody from the different party comes to you to give judgment, will you help the person or will you not do it? No. And that is affecting us. That is also affecting us. That is affecting us. Uh, some people pass by the studio. Uh, they are the global awareness. And they are doing... Uh, no, we just talked about the policies. We talked about, you know, uh, the government, the political party. And they have this to share with me. When they shared it with me, I told them that any day Elijah Mojo come on the program, I will feature these uh, people. So let us get to get information uh, from the global awareness. And uh, when I return, I will continue with my guest, Alhaji Ibrahim Mojo is my guest on Trade Business Africa. Honorable Minister, we are sad to demonstrate today our worries are that we are tired of the chief tenancy dispute and political crisis in our country and Africa, our dear continent. We are therefore here to plead on behalf of school-going children in Ghana and Africa. We want the leaders of this continent to find a lasting solution to this problem. Thank you. I have received your petitions. I will send them to the floor of Parliament. I promise all of you that the government will help to address your worries. Thank you. Honorable members, I was watching the evening news on TV and I saw children demonstrating to the office of the Minister for Women and Children Affairs. I would therefore call on the Minister, Honorable Peace IETV, to give us an insight into the demonstration. Thank you. Madam Speaker, these sorrowful expressions convey the heartfelt hope of young people's who have suffered for years as a result of the disputes in our country. Their only desire is to live a normal life. Madam Speaker, these are some things written on their placards. One, we are only 11 years and below. Two, we can't influence politics. 
chieftaincy and war, but we want to live. Three, we wait for peace. Four, we will live to see it. Five, we want to attend school and to visit our friends and family without fear of abduction. Six, I hope the government will listen. We want a better life. We want peace. Thank you. I will now call on the majority leader, Honorable Sumaila Ang Belinda. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, war has always been brutal. It has always ruined the lives of soldiers and has always brought suffering to civilians. But in recent years, war has changed its face. Today's wars are mainly civil wars. Wars between opposing groups of citizens of the same country. Madam Speaker, civil wars are cruel, bloody operations that results in thousands of deaths, sexual assault, forced exile, and in extreme cases, genocide. Indeed, Madam Speaker, when atrocities are committed by neighbor against neighbor, the wounds may take centuries to heal. Nowhere is the brutality of civil war more evident than its effect on children. During the last decades, over 2 million children lost their lives in civil conflict. According to the United Nations of Refugees, and another 6 million were wounded. I therefore appeal to this noble house to find a lasting solution to the ongoing chieftaincy dispute in our dear country. Thank you. Thank you. Minority Leader, what do you have to say? Honorable Rochelle Bedu. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to comment on the cost of war in Africa. The numbers speak for themselves. Madam Speaker, between 1990 and 2005, the cost of war has been a conservative 200 and $84 billion, which is about $18 billion a year. Moreover, Madam Speaker, in 2006, 50% of the world's highly intense conflict occurred in Africa. Indeed, this is due to corrupt agreements between corporations and regimes, which most times call for military intervention, and this is another fundamental cause of war. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Apia Lili. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I support what the Honorable Minister has just said. The devastating impact of the Democratic Republic of Congo tells the story only too well. Madam Speaker, in the deadliest conflict since World War II, about 5.4 million people have lost their lives. It is estimated that over 90% of arms and ammunition are imported. Moreover, Madam Speaker, they are cheap, the continent weapon of choice. The Hadi Kalashnikov costs as little as Hundred dollars five hundred and eight cost twenty dollars each. Madam Speaker, judging by recent studies, including one by the New America Foundation, over fifty percent of United States arms clients are based in developing countries, with undemocratic government or regimes that engage in major human rights abuses. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Dagaji Helena. Thank you. Madam Speaker, the media is now being used to influence violence. Madam Speaker. I believe strongly that abusive language is as a result of unqualified editors whose only aim is getting money from people and publishing every item without scrutinizing the issue and proper investigation done. All, all you wake up to hear is abusive language all over the airwaves. Madam Speaker, I believe that it is time the Ghana Journalist Association wake up to the challenge. When this is done, Madam Speaker, it will go a long way to to go a long way to solve the crisis we have in this country. Thank you. Honorable Fasson Emanuelisha. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, whenever there are chieftaincy disputes in this country, people are forced to flee their homes. That one is an example, and I think this is a wake-up call from the children of Awareness Club to the government and all the security services to watch closely how some of these chieftaincy disputes are resolved. Around the world, there are now 50 million refugees and displaced persons. Half of them are children. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Asari Richard. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, lasting peace can never be established while people are learning to cook. Madam Speaker, I think that the National Commission for Civic Education must be well resourced yes. to give accurate knowledge about the loss of the land. Madam Speaker, it is sad to know that about 85% of this country are ignored to the laws. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Gomashi Kinsley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, famine and disease following the wake of war. A civil war means that 
crops will get planted and harvested if any medical service will function and data international aid will get to the needy. Madam Speaker, one study of an African civil war revealed that 20% of the casualties died from disease and 78% from hunger. Only 2% died as a direct result of the fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Lawson Alberta. Madam Speaker, another root cause is greed. Greed for power and greed for money. As already stated by my colleague MP, the many chieftaincy disputes surrounding our nation and how political leaders and their foot soldiers are motivated by greed could lead to a dangerous journey of no return. Many participants in armed conflict are motivated by personal gain. Madam Speaker, greed is manifested in many forms, from large-scale trading by military and political leaders from village-level pilots by youth with guns. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Adiza. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this is difficult to achieve when combatants have the war and capacity to continue to fight ultimately. Though it is hatred and greed, rather than bullets and rifles that fuel the flame of war. Covetousness or greed is a fundamental cause of war and hatred frequently leads to violence. Madam Speaker, to approve these destructive feelings, people need to change the way they think. They need to be educated in the ways of peace. However, at present, we live in a world that teaches adults and children not the value of peace, but the glory of war. Sadly, even children are being trained to kill. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Gao Clement. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will go straight to the ready availability of cheap but lethal weapons. About 500,000 deaths a year. Many women and children are attributed to so-called small arms. In some African countries, an AK-47 assault rifle can be bought for the price of a chicken. Madam Speaker, it is sad to say that in some places, Rifles are becoming almost as plentiful as domestic bears. Madam Speaker, there are now estimated 500 million small arms and light weapons worldwide. This means one for every 12 persons. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Tinsana Julius. Madam Speaker, low tech, but brutal civil wars. 90% of the casualties are civilians, rather than combatants. It is clear that, increasingly, children are targets, not incidental casualties of armed conflict. Madam Speaker, rape has become a military tactic in some war-torn areas. Insurgents rape virtually every adolescent girl found, found in the villages they overrun. The goal of such rapists is to spread panic or destroy family ties. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Answer Patricia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I believe that the Chieftaincy Act of the Constitution must be looked at again. Madam Speaker, the process is so hereditary that incompetent men are sometimes made chiefs simply because their father or grandfather was a chief. Madam Speaker, this makes the selection of chiefs so cheap that you don't need to attain any educational level or have character value to become a chief. And Madam Speaker, as the saying goes, when a blind man leads people, they fall into a ditch. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Cynthia Fiajo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To add to what my colleague has said, I also believe that when adults learn to overcome hatred and greed, it will go a long way in the elimination of four and chieftaincy disputes in our country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Ibrahim Osman Isaka. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As the saying goes, charity begins at home, Madam Speaker. Parents should make sure the games their children play and the films they watch do not encourage violence so they will grow to no peace. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Members, Parliament is adjoined again. Because the executive arm of government will be meeting at 4 p.m. today to deliberate on today's motion and when parliament resumes on Tuesday, the House will be briefed on the text of the President of the Republic. Thank you.
Well, I did promise that I'll be bringing special focus uh, from the global awareness. You've heard from the children, and of course, if you ask me, this is one of the interesting moments I will have. I was hearing one of the members of the house saying, AK-47 is being sold for almost nothing. And that is to tell you that when we allow war in our community, it is the children or the less privileged that will still be the victims. Well, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. I hope I will also become a speaker one day. Yes. Would you like me to be a speaker? Yes, of course. Yeah, well, is, this, is, this, is it tough to be a speaker? Mm, yes. It's, it's tough. tough? Yes. I wish you all the best. Well, I'll be going for another short break, and uh, when I return, I, re I continue the program. The program is Trailblazers Africa, where I celebrate those that believe on the peace and unity development of the continent of Africa. Please stay tuned. I'll continue to give you surprise on the program. That was quite interesting. I must say, interesting one from those children. Uh, I also enjoyed them talking to uh, Madam Speaker and uh, all along. What can we then do to move this continent of Africa forward? One, we must be very prayerful. <laughs> And as it is said, with God, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Then, secondly, let's respect one another. No matter the continent you are coming from. Mm -hmm. With that, we can share and give out. You know. We must be prayerful. We must respect one another. Mm -hmm then our government should put the right policies yes. in place. Mm -hmm. uh, Alaji, you are the CEO of Millimont Group of Companies. Uh, I was just asking you, you are into shipping, export and import, mm -hmm. uh, construction, general mm -hmm. supplies, your mm -hmm. cards, mm -hmm. and what have you. How do you, how do you cope with all these, con I mean, considering the family angle too, yes. and the chieftaincy, yes. you know? Yes. Uh, I have three daughters. Uh, the first one completed Islamic University, the second one is also at Methodist University, and the last one, she's at the uh, Corpo Christi GSS. And my wife, she's also a business woman. She's called Madame Millicent Mojo. She has also been very helpful in my decision. When, whatever decision I want to take, I consult her. And she has also contributed to where I have got now, and I have very much respect for her. And my staff that uh, I have, I have a branch at the airport, I have a branch at Aflao, and I have a branch also at the Kotoka International Airport in Tema. Uh, I have about 65 staff so I take care of them, and they are all doing their best to contribute to where we have got to. And if you come to the construction, we have a, a, a department people who are professionally handling it. If you have the shipping too, we have people who are also there to take care of that. And the supplies, we have our foreign partners. We tend that when we win, we get the things and supply straightforward. And we do that business. Hmm. Yes. So you've been coping with all of this? Yes. That is interesting. Yes. I, I wanted to probably speak to some of the younger generation. Uh, but before you speak to the younger generation, I want to say a big thank you to Madam Millicent Mojo mm. uh, for doing a great job in the life of our uh, uh, brother here, Alhaji Ibrahim Mojo. He, he, he just said you are too wonderful. I wish I wish I can see you. Mm. Uh, but if you can't, see, if you I cannot see you. If you can see me, I say hi to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what would you say to younger generation? Oh, this is uh, a gentleman from a very uh, low background. Uh, down to Tamale, go to school barefooted, uh, not knowing where the next meal will come from. And today, you are feeding over 65 people. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is... Uh, the youth now should not change the world. They should not change the world? Yes. Wow. That's it perfect. means, yes. Everybody wants to leave Ghana to travel outside. Some people are involved in dubious work. Follow somebody, then you will be able to achieve what you want. Mm. As I said, I didn't get it easy. My goal now, I'm also looking at somebody like Elijah Asuma Banda, Antrak. 
He has got vessels. He has got aircraft. And I work with him in Nigeria. I know how he started. You know. Did he start in Nigeria? He had a branch in Nigeria, Atika Island. Mm. Yes. He was controlling a vessel called Kaduna. You see that vessel. That is how I got to know him. You know, he is still doing his best. Very good Muslim, very good man, focused in, 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 in life. So I'm also looking at him that I should be the next Asuma Banda. Mm. Very simple man. When you see him and they don't point, they don't tell you this is Alaji Asuma Banda. You don't make him up. He speaks business. You know, so you get somebody you can look at him and you, you do something. You know, so the youth should just be patient. Try to sacrifice part of your life to identify that this is what you have done to get to this level. But if you just want to make it overnight, my brother, it will be bad. Hmm. And to the policy makers. Yes. The policy, yes. Yeah. Well, for the policy makers, my advice to them is to make sure that whatever they tell us they are going to deliver, they should give it to us. Yeah. Because we have voted them, and we believe that whatever we say, they'll be able to do it. So I look at them that they are supposed to take care of everybody and so that the country will go forward. That is how it is. Hmm. They are supposed to take good care of us and take good care of the nation so that our countries uh, can also move forward. Uh, maybe I, I will be rounding off with Alaji uh, when he will be greeting his people uh, from Krushi. Yeah. Uh, maybe a message to your people in yes. Krushi before I allow you go this morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my greetings to the Krushi community mm -hmm. and uh, my senior chief, uh, my secretary, my very good friend, is called Alazi Sani, uh, a retired uh, security officer in the port, and also mm -hmm. Uh, my uncles from Bota region, that I thank them very much for the support they also gave me in my life. Mm. And my father is still alive, That's and I, my regards to him, and my mom, that I love all of them. Wow. What a wonderful message from Alaji Ibrahim Mojo there to all of you out there. I also want to thank everyone who are taking time to sit with me for one hour and see what I have to discuss with Alaji Mojo Ibrahim, the Chief Executive Officer of Millimont Group of Companies. I want to thank you very much for okay. coming on the program. Thank sir. you too yeah. uh, for, for accepting me in your, in, in your station and I'm very privileged to be with you. Anytime you need me, I'll be there for you. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a promise. <laughs> promise made and promise will be kept. I will always yeah. tell you yeah. whether those promises are kept. Yeah. So wherever we need him, we should let him know. He will be there for us. Sponsorship of the program, of yeah. course, is one yeah. of the areas yeah. that we'll be looking at. Yeah. I must be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I've been working with a lot of people. I can see uh, Evish, Rule, uh, I.D. Johnson, and of course, the P.P. Nakoshi. He's been doing a very great job today. Ato is also fine. And uh, Lord, everybody has done so well. Dan, you have done so well. I use the word peeping because you just peep in and peep out. Peep in and peep out. My name is Moise Opadi. I'll peep into your room again next week. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.